My guest today is Jeff Fritz. Jeff, how you doing? Hey, great to see you, David. Great Thanks so much for you. having me. I have to ask you, what's the D on the hat for? David Giard, of course. Of course. That's what I figured. That was my guess. I didn't want to assume anything. Who knew? <laughs> it's great to see you here at the Orlando Convention Center. What's the name of this place? No, Orange County Convention Orange Center. Orange in Orlando, Florida. Because, I don't have to remember this, this is where we met. We met in this convention center six years ago, I think. A long time Scene ago. Scene of the Crime, 2012 Tech Ed. Tech Ed. We were both finalists in the, the, the that contest. Yes. Yes, we were. We were both finalists. That's right. And one of us won the Speaker Idol contest, and oh, it wasn't me. I've forgotten who even won that contest. No, <laughs> not at all. My Something nemesis. Something with two thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was cool back then, oh, and I think we've come a long way since then. Absolutely. I am mean, I'm, 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 think I'm slightly more famous than I was uh, six no, years ago. No, lots more famous. And, and there you, you go. my gosh, you're not only are you speaking all over the world, you're yeah, working sure. for Microsoft, but you're online. You've got... You've got uh, all the ships at sea are out watching your live <laughs> streaming stuff. So so I write code online live, uh -huh. right? I, I, I try not to plan it out too much. Um, but I, I use the Twitch live video streaming platform okay. so that um, folks can tune in and learn how to write code with me online. And I, I really try to take that that uh, Bob Ross or Julia Child approach. Oh yeah, happy Back, little code. Happy, happy little, little code, you know? <laughs> but you, you always watch that and at the end they always said, you know, for more information or for, for the recipe that Julia Child used, mm -hmm. send a self-addressed stamped envelope to, uh, and here's their address. So yeah, and just, they would, just a couple of weeks you'd get some feedback. Right, you'd get, you know, here's the recipe and you'd be able to go and use it. But in an age when we can, anybody can record a video and post it on YouTube, um, why not ask questions live while you're recording and get that instant feedback? That's amazing. So Take advantage of that technology. Let's take advantage of that, and then let's bring open source into the mix, and we can not just you know have people get the code and be able to test it out and learn from it, but maybe they can also write a pull request. You know, hey, I can do something here. I know how to do this really well. Let me write a pull request that shows a little bit of what I can do. Jeff will review it on his show, give me a little bit of feedback, and if it works out great, we'll accept it and merge it into the project. Oh, interesting. So your your show that's on Twitch is basically people watching you code. That's that's where it starts. Okay. I drop in sound effects. I drop in some funny images every now and again. Oh, okay. So oh, whenever you've got I, a green screen behind you. Right? I've got a green screen behind me <laughs> so that I actually remove my background and it looks like I'm sitting inside a Visual Studio. Ah, like it's a sort of a Tron thing. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like that. And then um, whenever, right, in, in Twitch, just like how on YouTube, you have that, that follow button, right, or okay. subscribe, and it will notify you whenever there's a video available. Whenever somebody clicks that on my channel, mm -hmm. Steve Ballmer shows up and yells, developers, developers, developers. developers. Develop i got to get him on my show. Ah, good luck. <laughs> because he's got good a luck. lot of enthusiasm, yes. just like you clearly have for this technology. I, I so enjoy it because it's a great way to engage not just, not just folks who are a little bit more around the have been around the block like we have in writing code but also some of the some of the younger folks out there uh -huh. that they don't want to spend the time or the money to go out and, and read a book or you know go to a training session or they don't have the money to go to a big conference mm -hmm. but they want to learn you yeah. know they've got some enthusiasm for programming I want to make access to those facilities it drop dead simple for them you know what Tune in when Jeff's online, or one of my friends that you know that I also encourage to live stream, and learn a little bit. You know, it's real easy to to pick up C sharp. I mean, all the tools and and the language are free to to get and yep. work with. So let's make learning it free too. So you're mostly writing in C sharp. Mostly C sharp. We've tried F sharp for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, that was fun. We're going to continue doing that in the, in the next month or so here. And um, we're working with Azure. We're working with Visual Studio Code. And I've even got... I, I did May is for Macs. And I did all .NET development on, on my Mac in cool. May. Hmm. I've got coming up in October. I'm, I'm rebranding October. I'm all giving right. it a new name. All right. October is what? Is Ubuntober. <laughs> it fl rolls off the tongue. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> it's amazing like that. But we're going to do... For October 2018, we're going to do the whole month in Linux programming nice. .NET code. 
Very cool. What are you building? Are you building a different thing each episode? or So what? I was for a while trying to build you know, something different each week. And it was hard to come up with, you know, here's the new thing that we're going to do. And I, I kind of lost folks at times. So I've, I established back in March of 2018 um, a project called Core Wiki. Hmm. And Core Wiki is a simple wiki. It's a CMS, right? A content management system that's written with ASP.NET Core. So anybody on Windows, Mac, or Linux can write code and contribute or download it and test it out, okay. write some code into it, break things, but it'll deploy and run everywhere. Huh. So it's a it's an ongoing project that um, every every episode, I guess it is, we, we write a little bit more code, we'll re- open some issues, we'll review some pull requests from folks in the community. Ah, and so this is all out on GitHub somewhere. It's all on GitHub. Mm-hmm. Um, real easy to find, github.com, C Sharp Fritz, Core Wiki. Okay. I've, I even... I even had somebody say, hey, it'd be great if we had a deploy to Azure button there. Ah. So we put a deploy to Azure button into it. And uh, we worked with some of the, some of the uh, cloud developer advocates who work on uh, Azure pipelines. Hmm. And we built a pipeline, so now it builds in and I can, I can push out a release using Azure DevOps. Nice. So we slowly learn about different features of different frameworks, different services, whether it's Azure, whether it's Postgres, whatever. You know, we'll drop in a different technology and learn about it by adding a feature into Core Wiki. Oh, very cool. So everything's a, every episode's a little bit different, but you're still just building the same uh, content management yeah. system over, over in, time. In that way, even if you haven't seen you know, some of the episodes, mm. that's okay. The code's all out there, and we're building on something that now... As, a, as someone who's learning technology, is easy to consume because everybody kind of knows what a wiki is. Right. So I can relate to it as, as a developer, as somebody who's just, you know, browsing the internet and wants to learn. Yeah, if they don't know what a wiki is, they can go to Wikipedia and that will tell them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very meta. Very, to look up very meta, going Wikipedia. round and round. <laughs> Um, tell me uh, a little bit about the tooling that you're using, the hardware and the software. Sure. So you mentioned uh, Twitch, which is a service, an online service, kind yep. of kind of YouTube-ish, right? It's kind of YouTube-ish. So where YouTube, most people go there and they'll watch pre-recorded videos, mm-hmm. like this one, like this one. And um, but YouTube also has a live component where folks can broadcast live videos on yep. YouTube. Twitch is uh, live content first. And it's primarily focused towards gamers, right? Yeah, you want to that. tune in. If you want to watch, I never really got this, but I understand there's a big community that wants to watch someone else play a video game. Right. So just like you want to tune in and watch folks play play baseball, right? right? They're pretty good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to watch and see some of the best athletes play baseball or right. football. But apparently video gaming is a spectator sport. And if you want to watch some of the best folks play, play whatever video game. Right. And we used to do this as kids. You'd go down the end of the street and you'd, you'd visit with your with your buddy Mark and you might watch him play, you know, Super Mario Brothers. And, oh, my gosh, Mark knows how to beat Super Mario Brothers. <gasps> Let's go see, you know? Mm-hmm. Same type thing, except you can tune in online and watch people play whatever game, okay. Fortnite, whatever. All right, that's that's fine for you guys to do. I don't I don't get into it unless you're like my kids, then I'm really not interested in watching video games. But oh. I get I get that there are people that are. And that's Absolutely, cool. but Twitch has started broadcasting things besides games. They yeah. want to do more. And so in people real are going to watch stuff. you. So now coding is a spectator sport. Absolutely, of course it's a spectator sport. <laughs> everybody think? wants to see. Well, everybody can relate to that. <laughs> exactly. I just don't want anybody throwing a flag on me or or a referee coming on the side of the screen and saying. Foul, you know. Uh, are there are there professional sports teams in Philadelphia, where Pro- you live? Yes. Okay. That's what I, okay. <laughs> we won a Super Bowl this past year. We did. Wow, that's that must did. be really exciting. <laughs> it was incredibly <laughs> exciting. Thanks. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the Lions have won a. Have they won a Super they're Bowl? Due. They're, they're due. They're due. <laughs> they're overdue. Yes, they are overdue. We were overdue. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, so I use Twitch. There's other services out there that you can use. Of course, we mentioned YouTube. Yes. Uh, Microsoft has a service called Mixer that you okay. can use. Um, Mixer's the, the new kid on the block, and it's leveling up and getting some great new features quickly. Hmm. Um, but once you have a service that you can use, and you can, you can also use things like Azure Media Services right. to build your own service if you'd like, but you're going to end up having to you know, foot the bill for a lot of that, where okay. these other providers will take care of all the networking for Got you. Got it. You wanted to build your own, the next YouTube or the next exactly. Twitch, you would use Azure Media Services for yep. that. Absolutely. 
So I then use something called OBS, or Open Broadcaster Software. That's that's what you use locally on your yep. Windows machine. So I run that on my Windows machine. They also have a version that runs on the Mac. Uh -huh. And I can build my scenes out with where my camera's going to appear, where my screen's going to appear, so that I can screencast mm -hmm. and assemble something that looks nice and compelling on okay. video. And you're doing that in real time. You're switching between yes. showing your face, showing mm -hmm. the screen. Absolutely. Maybe uh, the little talking head in the corner of the screen with the code showing below that, something like that. Exactly. Right. So is, that, is that a commercial product, or is that open source, or what is that? No, OBS is completely open source. Okay. I, I use a, um, a hardware uh, tool called the Stream Deck that okay. has 15... Uh, LED keys on it that I can program that'll do things like help me switch scenes ah. inside of OBS, okay. play music, play sound effects, and uh, you know start, stop, and manage the stream. Okay, so that that hardware plus your webcam that's that's exactly. all you're using. And I and I was using a Logitech C920 webcam. Okay. Now I use a Razer Keo. Mm -hmm. So um, other folks use camcorders. Use 35 millimeter cameras so they hmm. can get really good high def pictures as they're broadcasting. All right, so you can spend as much money as you want on this, oh, but you're yes. you're not. You're this is no, no. relatively inexpensive. What you're relatively you're inexpensive. Yeah, the the biggest cost actually is having a good video card on your machine huh? so that you can do that transcoding to send the video out to, in my case, Twitch. So okay. it can be broadcast. All right, and Twitch has a free uh, service as well. Yep, Twitch is completely free to do the transcoding and send that stuff out. Um, it, it's just I need to have a, a good machine with a good video card right. to send that encoded video. Very cool. And then uh, this isn't just people watching you code. This is this is an interactive thing. You got a dialogue with your viewers, right? Yeah, tell I do. Tell me about that. So so I do talk to the viewers. I like to call them pair programmers because as I'm writing code, they're going to be quick to say, "Oh, Jeff, you missed a you missed a parenthesis. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a semicolon missing there." Or you know what? You wrote this method this way. Uh, it'd be great if you optimized it like. So and so, right? Yeah. So or maybe just slow down, please. What did you just do here? I don't understand. Exactly. Maybe right, and being able to answer those questions, I think, is where the real value in this type of that's type the of equivalent of the st self-addressed stamp envelope that exactly. used to take weeks to get back. To yes, you. right. Or or on your blog post, right? People posted comments. You know, why did you choose to do this? Well, I'll answer that directly as the video is going on. That is cool. Although I've I I get much nastier comments on my blog. I, uh, I don't know what it is. What can I tell you? <laughs> there are people throwing snowballs at my blog. Oh, but no. There's meta another Metaphorically reference. speaking. <laughs> mm. So, um, it's, uh, I try, I've been fortunate. I've been able to keep the, uh, keep the trolls to a minimum. Good. So, I've got strong moderation in there. Automatic moderation, actually. Is that right? Yeah. Does Twitch so provide that? Twitch provides that. Good. But you can also do some things to add moderation in yourself. So, I actually, I've started writing a bot that will moderate the chat room. And we'll do things like when somebody posts a link into the chat room, well, go see what that is. Mm -hmm. Bounce that image, if somebody posts an image, off of cognitive services and tell me what's in that image. Oh, so if it's a dirty picture, for example, you can filter that out. If, it's, if, it's, if it has adult content, yes. right, and cognitive services can tell you that, right. I can do things, I can do punitive things like say, well, you've been banned for five minutes ah. and you're not allowed to talk. Oh, wow. So I can do all kinds of things like that, but I think there's there's an opportunity to add some more features into that. Uh -huh. Maybe maybe you know a couple things about cognitive services, and you could join me on a stream. I love I love cognitive services. I'm a big fan. I love the simplicity of it. It is. Even a guy like me can do it. But you're the David Gr. That's exactly there the impression go. I'm trying to create. I, I create these cool things with stuff like cognitive <laughs> services, and people think I'm a wizard, and they don't know it's, it's so simple. So we got to do uh, something about that. We'll, we got to try we'll, and we'll build something about. together. That'll we'll be fun. About. Oh, we should do it on your show. Maybe on, Absolutely. on uh, your Twitch show. Where, where do people find your Twitch stream? Real easy. Twitch.tv slash C Sharp Fritz. And when do they find it? So I broadcast four times a week. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Okay. 7 a.m. Pacific. Because you're in the city of brotherly love. City of brotherly love, Philadelphia, absolutely. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yep. And uh, and then and, and are they? Um, is it just live, or they can go? But there's an archive of them somewhere as well. There right? is an archive. So after the video's been pre uh, produced, after I go off the air, I archive it off to YouTube. You can go out to YouTube.com/slash C Sharp Fritz, and they're all there. You've been doing this for how long? I've been doing this since November. We're out to show 137. So you're coming up on almost uh, a year on this thing. Yes. We're, this is October is in a few days. Yep. Uh, that's that's pretty impressive. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I've gotten hooked. It's been so much fun. Uh, and um, we also have other online presences as well. 
Sure. Um, I have a blog, jeffreyfritz.com. Oh, you can always find me on Twitter, um, C Sharp Fritz. Jeff, thanks so much. Thank you. A lot of fun. Hey there, my name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm live broadcasting here on Twitch about science, technology, and friends, just like the folks there in the chat room.